dear friend of SGSE. I'm really happy to share some time with you today, even if it's virtually. I am Claudia Nuret, a former astronaut, first acting for CNES, the French Space Agency, and then for ESA. I really, truly believe in your giant leap initiative. I had the privilege to fly twice in space, 16 days in 96 on board the Mir station and 10 days in 2001 on board ISS at a very early stage of assembly. I am a medical doctor, a specialist in rheumatology and sport traumatology. And after my selection in 85, as a research astronaut, I got a PhD in neuroscience. The selection gave me the possibility to enter in a fascinating career. 15 years as an active astronaut, mainly in training in Star City near Moscow, in a freshly open framework for international cooperation. Daring and determined to make a child's dream come true magnified by the first moon landing in July 69, when I was 12, a giant leap for humanity. This exceptional adventure gave me the opportunity to live several lives, six at least, currently. First a medical doctor, practitioner in an hospital, a scientist working in the field of neurophysiology in an international utilizing microgravity as a unique field of experimentation. Then astronaut or cosmonaut, if you want, actively participating in a new geopolitical configuration from USSR, Russia, USA, and Europe. Then minister in the French government in charge of research and technology, and then European affairs. And I laid for two wonderful science museums in Paris. Paris de la Découverte et Cité des Sciences et de l'Industrie. And then finally, I was an um, advisor to ESA DG for deep space exploration and mainly the concept of a moon village and for sure European space policy ambitions. Throughout this exciting professional life where I have had a chance to work with very different persons and very diverse ecosystems. I have strengthened certainties, but I still have unanswered questions. With regard to certainties, working hard to get expertise and to be recognized, mastering with responsibility a culture of risk, daring to undertake and daring to be different being determined and persevering in spite of failures, favoring teamwork, building trust and respect for others. Be attentive to transmit, to share, but remain open to learn from others. Life is not just work in time, so take time and take care. And with regards to challenging observation, the low presence of women in space, engineering, and digital professions. When I graduated from medical school, it was in the 80s, I was convinced that the struggles of our mothers, of our grandmothers, has given the possibility to advance the place of women on workplace and that it has broken down most of the barriers. In the engineering professions at the time, we had raised the percentage of uh, female presence from 15 to 25%, but that was not enough. We quickly reached a plateau. And in some cases, even today, we are down 14% in digital technology, 21% on average in engineering outside the care field, less than 10% in tech entrepreneurship, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM suffers from a lack of diversity, and this compromises our future. 
the scientific approach is not just rationality and proof, it's critical spirit, it's empowerment, and it's freedom. Scientific literacy is an absolute requirement for everyone in a complex and uncertain world. That was my second worry, the lack of confidence in science, a society where mistrust is a pillar, a society turning inwards with self-centered individuals. But coming back to space and women in space, as I'm personally involved, in Europe, 10% of female candidates in 85 astronaut selection in France and 16% in ESA selection in 2008. And you know well, Samantha Kessifaliti was the active astronaut now in Europe. As you know, probably, we will have a new European astronaut selection next year in ESA. And I really hope that we will raise this level towards better balance being attentive of the diversity of talents that we need to build the future and explore new horizons. Furthermore, you know that the wave of retirement is quickly coming in ESA and in space field in general, more than 40% in the 10 years to come. That's a lot. The European space sector needs new talents, new profiles to take care of the future in an active, inspiring, and responsible environment, agency, research, engineering field. Obviously, some of these new talents will join the European Astronaut Corps. They will perform missions on ISS, and they will explore deep space, lunar getaway. They will maybe put the first European foot on the moon surface. And why not the first Martians, astronauts, European, will be there. But we also need to explore these new windows to push the boundaries. We need engineers, researchers, lawyers, architects, economists, sociologists, politicians, and so on. If I may add a personal conviction, may be linked to this uh, overview effect I experienced during my flight, looking to Earth through the window. To be smart is to be able to zoom out, to see the whole thing, to change perspective, even to expand mental horizons, openness to experience. It's vital to see things in a way that might be called visionary. Personally, it's ethics and philosophy of science that fascinate me today, back on Earth. We need your talent, your knowledge, your creativity and involvement to carry on the path, to take care of human beings as peaceful humanity and to preserve our mother Earth's planet. So beautiful, but vulnerable. Join us. You are going to have a magnificent adventure. And together, we will be better equipped to progress. We are waiting for you. I'll conclude with my favorite quote from Oscar Wilde. Shoot for the moon, even if you miss your land amongst the stars. Have a good meeting.